Good morning, YouTube. Do you have a plan for how to keep your fresh food cold in the event of a power outage? Part of my plan is to use this 12 volt fridge freezer that I purchased many years ago for camping and off-road uh, driving. It's an ARB uh, 40 liter model, but similar units are available in the Engel and other brands. They're all very similar. They can run off of uh, 12 volt DC or 120 volt AC power. They can run off either 12 volt DC or 120 volt AC power. And I've used mine a lot in the back of my 4x4 and has kept food cold for many days or even weeks in a row. I've never really checked the power consumption other than to read the spec sheet which lists about a 4 amp draw and a 25% duty cycle. One of the goals for my solar power system was to have enough capacity to run this fridge 24 hours a day if needed. When I had my original 30 watt Harbor Freight system, that didn't have enough capacity to do this, both with the low solar output as well as the PWM charge controller. When I added the 60 watt panel and MPPT charge controller to the 30 watt Harbor Freight panels, I was able to run this fridge 24 hours with no problem. I came up with a rough estimate, which I wrote down here, of uh, 19 amp hours of power per day based on my charge controller display. But I wanted to get a more accurate reading, so I picked up this extra power cord and cut it here and spliced in a pair of these uh, Dean's power connectors. I've standardized on the Dean connectors for my lower current devices and have added mating connectors to my watts up meters. That way I can disconnect any cable, insert a power meter, and then be up and measuring the current and power in that circuit with no tools required. See the power meter fires up, and if I connect the load, with the Dean's plugs, the male connector is the source, and then the female connector is the load, and they mark the polarity on the plug, it's, it's kind of a T-shaped plug, and the top of the T is positive. So what I'll do, I've added the meter there, I'm going to put a gallon or two of water inside. You can see there's quite a bit of room in there. This is like I said the 40 liter so that's uh, has room for a fair bit. Uh, they, I think they make a 30 and a 60 liter unit. What I'll do is run this today with a gallon or two of water in the fridge to let it cool down. Then I'll reset the power meter later this afternoon and run it for 24 to 48 hours and record the power consumption over that time. So let's see what this fridge draws. This is the number one refrigeration setting. We got the fridge running, uh, starting out warm. It'll probably run oh, about an hour continuous and then it'll go into its uh, on-off cycles. And uh, so anyway, I'll let this run until this afternoon, I'll un uh, reset the meter uh, so that the amp hour count goes back to zero. Then I'll run it for 24, maybe 48 hours to get a good, uh, good average reading. And we'll see how much power this fridge uses. And I'll get back to you when I have some data to report in a day or two. Uh, welcome back YouTube. I ran the fridge for five hours yesterday to get it cooled down and then I reset the watt meter at about 4.30 p.m. I checked the watt meter at 8.30 this morning. It read about 12 amp hours so that would be the battery capacity required to uh, run this for 16 hours in 50 to 60 degree temperatures. Uh, my solar battery bank was down to around 94% capacity, which on a 200 amp hour bank is right at 12 amp hours. 
So let's see how much power uh, the fridge used now that it's 24 hours later. It looks like it used 18.35 amp hours and about 218 watt hours. So it looks like uh, similar to reading to what I obtained last year from the charge controller, which was about 19 amp hours. One thing I noticed was the uh, voltage and current readings were jumping around quite a bit on the meter and I suspect that may be due to the compressor motor load varying over each revolution. So I may look into adding some capacitors to the input. I've been doing that in many of my DC circuits in my solar power system throughout the house. I add a parallel bank of about 5 4700 microfarad capacitors at each heavy load point to try and smooth out the power flow. It seems to help, especially when I have things like pulse width modulated dimmers and other non-constant loads. So instead of relying on the current pulse to flow all the way from the batteries, it only has to flow from the local capacitor bank. There seems to be a fair bit of empty space down around the compressor, so I may open up the fridge and look into adding some capacitors there. My fridge is an older model purchased in 2001. Newer models include digital temperature readouts and interior LED lighting. I might look into adding those features while I'm at it. I did add this transit bag to my fridge last year. It's a protective bag that's lined in a reflective uh, reflective insulation and that's supposed to help uh, cut the operating power in hot weather. So I use this for camping and off-roading in my truck and for power outages it's my backup refrigeration. Is there anything else a 12 volt fridge is good for? Sure, for example when I defrost my chest freezer I load up the fridge with frozen food and then I crank down the setting to the freeze setting and I can take my time defrosting the freezer. If I need to brine a turkey or pork roast overnight, I just drop that and let it run overnight. No need to make room in the refrigerator. If I'm going shopping and not able to rush right back home, I can throw the perishable food in the fridge in the back of the vehicle. And one thing to note is that these fridges are not the same as the low-cost Peltier-type coolers you might be familiar with. Those units use a solid state device that produces a temperature difference when power flows through them and they use a fan to cool that off. I have one of those. It'll produce maybe a 30 degree Fahrenheit temperature drop inside at about a con continuous 4 amp current draw. So if it's 60 degrees outside, the cooler can get pretty cold. But if it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside, you can do the math. These fridges have a motor and compressor just like your household refrigerator, only difference is they run on DC power and are portable. They are more expensive, mine cost about $600 back in the day, they're now closer to $900, but I think they are well worth it. For camping, no more stopping for bags of ice for the ice chest, no more draining out the meltwater, and no more soggy food that fell into that meltwater. And that ice adds up over time, figure $5 for a 20 pound bag that lasts a day or two. Not to mention the gas to run into town to pick it up. And if the power goes out for a few days or weeks, do you think you'll be able to get ice? You can get mini refrigerators for less money, but those need AC power, and that means running an inverter, so they take more power overall. The 120 volt power option on the fridge is nice if I overnight at a motel, just plug in the cord and my food stays cold. So this is one of my solutions for emergency refrigeration in cases of power outages. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. And be sure to rate and share this video if you liked it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos and subscribe to this channel for future updates. Thanks for watching.